are we from? The dark side of the moon! And we come in peace! That's some trailer footage from the 2012 space Nazi movie Iron Skies, and I seriously doubt anybody is going to mistake it for a documentary. It's some over-the-top midnight viewing to be sure, but where did this whole Nazi space program idea come from in the first place? <laughs> Comic books and movies are loaded with Nazi super science, and the roots go back all the way to mid-World War II comics. Robert A. Heinlein authored a tale about a German lunar base as early as 1947, and with such modern comics as Nazi werewolves from outer space, things have only grown more ridiculous. Nazi moon bases and UFOs are also a long-standing staple of conspiracy theorists. I mean, how else would Hitler have flown into the lizard man-haunted sanctuary of the hollow earth? But let's put all the comic book fun aside for a moment and consider the reality. The Nazis held power from 1933 until Germany's surrender in 1945. During this time, German scientists certainly pushed the boundaries of jet and rocket-powered propulsion. They secretly researched atomic weaponry and unleashed two of the more remarkable military technologies of the day, the dreaded V-weapons. The V-1 seen here was a pulse-jet-powered cruise missile. The flying bomb claimed thousands of lives, but was ultimately susceptible to anti-aircraft defenses. But then came the V-2, the world's first first long-range ballistic missile, and the first man-made object to reach space. This supersonic weapon was virtually unstoppable by existing defensive measures, but it ultimately proved ineffective in turning the tide of the war. The V-2 was a weapon of death and terror, but it also helped usher in the space age. The work of Werner von Braun and other German rocket scientists fueled the efforts of both the United States and the Soviet Union. Von Braun himself became a driving force at NASA and may have helped fuel the myth of the Nazi space program in the process. According to Smithsonian space history curator Michael Neufeld, during the Cold War, Von Braun and key associates deliberately gave the misimpression that while they'd been building weapons, they really only cared about space. Meanwhile, the Nazi power base itself had been devoted to total war, and the only reason they supported rocketry at all was to develop better weapons technologies. Make no mistake, very little scientific activity took place under the Third Reich that did not directly benefit the war effort, and this was especially true of rocketry. As both Michael Neufeld and Von Braun biographer Bob Ward related to me in 2011 interviews, a lot of the German rocketry scientists supported weapons building, and some were even enthusiastic Nazis. Von Braun himself was a right-wing nationalist German who had a lot of sympathy for the Nazis during the war. So again, there was no Nazi space program. Now, the Nazis certainly capitalized on a pre-existing German rocketry fervor, but empowered it solely for war, not for exploration. But in this, the Second World War and the Cold War to follow certainly propelled space exploration. As Neil deGrasse Tyson points out in his book Space Chronicles, space exploration is a mega project, much like the pyramids of old. And only three factors tend to propel us to complete such projects. War, economics, and the praise of royalty or deity. Humans are capable of such marvelous scientific achievements, but nothing speeds things along like our capacity to inflict brutal war. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. In fact, the Third Reich took the Hollow Earth theory seriously enough to send three expeditions to Antarctica. There's no question, a NASA launch is an amazing testament to human ingenuity. But where did the space shuttle come from? Perhaps one of the most fascinating theories is that the Nazi party had secret advanced technology years or even decades ahead of the Allied forces.